They said pick sense out of nonsense. And there's a lot of nonsense. People think that spirituality on a certain level has to be something that is, um, you know, you have to go to some mountaintop. You just have to go to the summit of your mind. You know, it's almost like the twilight zone. When you get to that summit of the mind, it becomes like a twilight zone because some things become plainly obvious. They become right in front of us. Before we get into this particular sabbatical lesson and reasoning and, and Shabbat Shalom, send that salam, and of course, to my brothers and sisters, Shalom Rastafari. We want to touch on some more metaphysical overstandings because we have to overstand before we overcome. In fact, it all begins with the word. Some simple teaching of Rastafari has always been, and it always remains to be true. For example, um, you've heard of this before from Rastafari, word, sound, and power. I just put word, sound, power. Of course, there's an and there. You could say word and sound and power. You could say word, sound, power. What is word, sound, power all about? Well, the Bible teaches that in the beginning, in the beginning was what? In the beginning was the Word. Now, we're in the second, this is the second uh, Shabbat or Sendet within our luni, lunar solar cycle of Hebrew and Jewish Torah portion readings, known as the, in the Hebrew, known as the Parsha. Now, word, sound, and power begins with the word. So this is, the first one was um, Bereshit, or Bereshit, Berasit, Berasit, is more the correct way. And this now goes to some of the nuance about concerning language. But first, let's touch on that metaphysical overstanding. So word, sound, and power, the Bible teaches us that in the beginning was the word, and the word was what? It was with God, and the word was God. That's interesting, because then Christ will teach us on God. Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, he teaches us that um, word, sound, and power. The beginning was God. He says, he says that God is a spirit, right? God is a what? Spirit. Now, further on in the teaching of Christ, we learn that God, the true God, the, the Ha Elohim, the true God is the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, right? So the spirit of truth, even the word truth is very interesting, but let's just try to understand truth right now, and then we'll get to the overstanding of truth. There's a couple of sayings, actually, that are right out in front of us, and before we get into this particular um, um, Shabbatical recording, and it connects with where we wanted to go with the second Torah portion reading, which is called in the Hebrew, Noah, Noah. The Ethiopically, we say, Noah, Noah, but they say, Noah. And we originally said we're going to touch on the name, because a lot that's involved, just like with Genesis or Berasit, there's a lot that's involved within the particular Torah portion and the particular reading and feeding. So this is more for ones to explore, hopefully, on their own. And we highly, highly recommend um, that, first of all, you go to our website, www.lojsociety.org. Check us out. Check out what we have there. There's a lot of freeware, shareware. There's some things ones can order and also support this particular ministry. But there's a lot there that ones can take advantage of, and we hope you do. While there is time, to take advantage of these resources, online resources, that are available at www.lojsociety.org forward slash study, forward slash study. So there's a study page, some archival documentation. The Schofield Study Bible is also there. We utilize that in our Bible studies, biblical studies, and um, Torah portion readings as an English reference as a reference point plus the study notes in there are very accurate and mainly they're non-denominational so some bibles are trying to sell you something the good thing about the Schofield study bible it's not trying to sell you a particular protestantism or so forth and so on it's explaining the bible via the bible and there's some other bibles out there that we sure we're sure that have um important um 
details in it, and we sometimes look through, compare, and study with other Bibles, too. But if you want to study with I and I and want to know, well, where are we coming from and where are we going with this, then the Schofield Study Bible, you can go to our website, the studies page, www.lojsociety.org forward slash study, and you'll see the Schofield Study um, reference Bible there. There'll be a free um, download. You can give a donation if you have, but it's a free download there. And um, also the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is there as well. You can use it on your tablet, on your computer, on your uh, smartphone, or other kind of interactive mobile device. So you can study as you go as well. So now, word, sound, and power. What, what do we want to touch on word, sound, and power? There's some very interesting, like, for example, the um, NAACP, they have this phraseology, which they call it, um, they say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And then oftentimes we would maybe, as people, you know, we would say things like, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't think so what? Do you over? I don't think so. What kind of statement is that? Some people are now going to say, oh, he's talking only sh semantics. That's all semantics. But this is, maybe we'll call this a, a part of the shim lesson. Because in this particular Torah portion reading, we are going to touch on, I think, yeah, in this particular Torah portion reading, we should be touching on uh, shim. You understand? Know shem. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. If you look up Shem, the simple interpretation, the direct meaning, is that Shem means the name. Shem means the name. A more detailed um, perspective of it would be that Shem means renown. And this all connects with this second Torah portion reading in our Hebrew um, lunar solar cycle of reading. Now, we notice this correspondences with what's going on in our atmosphere, in our so-called, or at least in this world, it's not our world, but in this world that we are in but not of. So both in the heavens as well as among men and people and other satellites on the earth. I'm not talking about the satellites up there, but the men and people who are in the orbit of this worldly kind of a thing. Um, so both Shem comes up in this, because remember, Noah had three sons, and there's an important teaching on that. I hope you stay tuned for that, or to get some of the basic over, overstanding, even the understanding leading to the overstanding, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, if you look under Noah, Noah. But let's get back to that statement, because remember, Noah's, Noah's uh, Torah portion speaks of the flood. And what's very interesting about the flood is that there's a lot of flooding going on nowadays. You know, there's this Bangkok, uh, Hong Kong flood that's been creeping, creeping, creeping. There's been floods here and there. And in this particular Torah portion reading, we learn of the great deluge or Noah's flood. And Noah's flood, there's a symbolic, metaphysical overstanding of that. And you have to remember that as above, so below. Christ taught us that whatever we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. Christ taught us, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, that whatever we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. Now, the fools want to go out into space instead of recognizing that the real, the real control of things, even up there, is down here from our perspective, because this is what our Master, Lord and Savior, has taught us. But they don't believe in our black Lord and Savior, so they're deluded. And so they're going to, you know, um, get what they, what they deserve, basically. But they're under great delusion, and this delusion as well is part of what they deserve. But so that I and I, you and I, be not deluded, let us continue to study, to pray, and to, to, to keep the weekly Shabbat as, as a holy set-apart time, as well as learn of the annual, there are annual Shabbats as well. And the annual Shabbats, we just came through one in the fall festival season, and we spent some time on each portion of it. Lastly, we touched on the, the Simchat Torah, 
and then it was brought to our understanding that um, the events that occurred in North Africa, particularly Libya, um, were also connected with that Simchat Torah. And as you probably have, um, hopefully you've got to check out those videos. And, and there's more to, to that as well, but let us move forward and let us deal with word, sound, and power. Now, the reason why we want to touch on word, sound, and power is because unless we understand the word, many will try to tell you that with, with, with our, our dry erase marker. They will try to say, this is just semantics, right? They'll say, it's all semantics. You're just talking semantics. We want to deal with real things. In the beginning was the word. I mean, everything is the word. Think about it. Contracts, agreements. It's all about the word. Everything is word. You know, so how can we avoid word? Words, word can mend hearts. Words can cause wars. Um, words, in a sense, lead to life, while also words may lead to death. You know, so everything is about the word. How can we take such a thing, semantics, and try to throw it in the garbage can like a lot of folks do? Well, a lot of these folks that will avoid getting into the detail you understand, are probably children of disobedience, and, they're, and they're, they're heavily burdened. There's a lot of heavily burdened souls, and we're going to touch on exactly what do we mean by heavily burdened souls, and what, if anything, can we do for, for them. The best thing we can do is learn the word, learn the truth, live the truth, be good examples of that truth, demonstration of that truth, and to preach to them, you understand, to preach them, proclaim to them the truth, both in our head and in our heart and with our mouth as well. But first of all, we need to study and show ourselves approved. We need to learn it so that we learn how to do it and we can demonstrate. The greatest, the greatest manifestation, of course, is a demonstration of it. So let's demonstrate what we mean by word. Word in the Ethiopic, we say in the Ethiopic, we say sim, right? Sim. In the Hebrew, this is known as shem. Right? So if you, sometimes it's written like this, like the one in the Bible who's called Sem is also known as um, Shem or Bamarinya Sein. And we'll say his name or write his name like this, Sein, Sein. Sein would equal, from an Ethiopic perspective, the Hebrew, um, syllabated, meaning that it's not this uh, same or Sem or Sim, it is Sh. You know, and there was a whole big thing in the Bible in um, the time of, I think, uh, the judges, I think it was Gideon, when there was a tribal war because people spoke differently. And this caused a lot of, some said Sem or Sim, others said Shem. So one spoke with a syllabated list, uh, like Selassie. Some say Selassie, but really it would be more correctly Shilase, Shilus so forth and so on. But be that as it may, the important point right here is sem. Sem. And we like we said, we're going to call this a shem lesson, word, sound, and power. Word, sound, and power is very, very important, both in our head and in our heart. You see what I'm saying? Word, sound, because in the beginning was the word, so we have to understand the word. This is why when we talked about getting even with evil, don't get even with with evil. You know, we hear these things, like we hear phrases like, um, I don't think so. It sounds like a good, I've used, I've used it. I'm not going to, like say, fake the funk. I, I've, I've used that. I've said that a lot of times too. But something, if, you, if you're sensitive, if you're not so distracted by the, the delusions and illusions, you'll pick up that, you, you get this perception, sense, but you may be so distracted or so much going on, you don't have time to focus. You see, the world doesn't want us to be able to meditate. The world, you understand, and the evil God of this world, who the Bible talks about is the devil, our adversary, doesn't want us to have time to really meditate, doesn't want us to have time to reflect. You know, they claim to be a godly nation, but they don't keep the Sabbath. You understand? They don't keep the Sabbath. Every day is a money day. Every day is a grumbling day. They don't, and therefore, if we don't have time to really ground ourselves, we remain ungrounded and not grounded. Therefore, we become um, susceptible 
you know what I'm saying, too much that if we had time to ground ourselves, time to reflect, so forth and so on, we'll be able to see our way out of this confusion and chaos and, and Babylon, and we can fulfill the word that says to come out of Babylon. The first Babylon we must come out is the confusion of our minds, the confusion of our hearts, and the key is the word. The key is all about the word. Now, the word in the Hebrew is connected with also the Shem. You understand? The Shem, more correctly, of course, is the name. Shem means name. Let's put this right here. It means the name. In another sense, it can mean renown, like when we read in this Torah portion about there were men of renown. There were men of the Shem. There were men of the name. We say Hashem as Hebrews and even Jews say Hashem to avoid the tetragrammaton or to avoid saying the Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, as we would say Yahweh, Baruchu. So they would avoid saying the name of God in the Hebrew and say Hashem. There's much that can be said for that, especially for us as elect Rastafari. We too should say Ha-Shem instead of saying the name of the King of Kings in vain as we have done. You know, the, all the Selassie-isms, selassie ha you know, all this kind of crazy stuff because of reggae and everything else. We have to remember that the name is very important. Imagine if somebody was to misuse your name, how would you feel? Although you probably have a Babylonian name, but still, if somebody was to miss, call you out your name how it touches you at the core of your being because the name, name is so important. So when we say word, we're looking at word in the English sense of semantics and we're connecting semantics with the Ethiopic Sim and the Hebraic Shem and the name same or Shem, blessed be the Lord God of the name or blessed be the Lord God of the renown. Now, we connected this particular point with a popular saying, just to give it as a, how can we say, as an example, when we say things like, I don't think so. Think about that for a moment. This is what we were saying to I and I, sister and um, I, sister wife, was saying, you know, this is why I love the, the Ethiopic and Amharic language, because um, we can say, um, I miscellaneum, you know, I miscellaneum. And I miscellaneous means that it does not seem to me whatever, whatever. It doesn't, I miscellaneous. It doesn't seem to me so. Or um, you miscellaneous. It, it seems to me to be so. Because people say, what do you think? What do you think? Oh, I don't think. You don't think. Now, when I was in school, and I give thanks to my moms, my earthly, and to my, my late departed earthly father, um, for at least teaching me the value of education. So when I um, found his majesty, more correctly he found me, but when I came across his majesty and his imperial master, Kedemah Haile the Hashem, and he said education is the key. I, 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 this man is, is, is very special. This man is very education. Because although it's something that we all should know, I mean, look, in this world that we live in, with education. Education keeps going up and up and up, making money or something that's so important for society and people to come together and to live in, in harmony and understanding is education. But why are they making education so difficult? Oh, they are not the authors of order, true order. They're the authors of chaos. They want this confusion. They want there to be misunderstanding. They want there to be miseducation. Why? Because it feeds into their, into their desire, into their way, into their God, the false gods who are about to be um, dealt with in a, in, a, in a significant way. But this is why this is important right here, what we're saying, right? Word, sound, and power. Right? Word, sound, and power. The word, the semantic, the sound. How does it see? If you look at the word sem, or like I say, um, semantic or uh, semitic. Semitic is the next word that kind of goes with this. Uh, semitic. Right? They say semitic. 
we would say Shemitic, right? Because it's coming from Shem. Blessed be the Lord God of, his, of, of Shem. But both of them are basically correct. People would say, well, uh, not a Semite, because semi, semi means half. From English and Latin it does, but not in the language. So don't get lost in translation. See, if you are seeking to get to the root of a word, you have to be into that, for example, Latin languages, Indo-European languages, different, way different than Hamo-Semitic or kamo shemitic languages like ancient Egypt is a kamo shemitic language, Ethiopic, Hebrew, or what they call afro shemitic do you know that Hebrew really comes under the category of Afro-Shemitic languages? Afro, black. See, it's right there in front of us, but with miseducation and so forth and so on, you know, and people getting caught up in the matrix, getting into this cycle, never keeping the Sabbath, the Shabbat, never understanding who they are. They don't have time to reflect, you understand, and to become sentient and to become truly conscious, not just Christ conscious, but just conscious of what they're saying. Because how many times have you said, how many times have you said, I don't think so, I don't think such and such. Basically, what you're telling your mind, and see, now they start talking about Alzheimer's and a lot of these mental diseases and disorders that are affecting people. They don't know how it's happening because it's a misuse of the word. You see, when we say words, you understand, about ourselves or about others, the, the whole universe vibrates to words, just like our bodies vibrate to words. So if one uses a lot of negative words, a lot of hateful words, this also rebounds and affects them, as well as it affects the other person as well, you see. And so in order to understand word, when Christ says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And when Christ says to us that, that um, he says that God is a spirit, and then he speaks of God as being the spirit of truth, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It's talking about how we need to use our words, both in this world and the next world, because the same basic laws function. The, the same basic laws, and the basic laws, ironically, are in the Bible, the same basic spiritual laws. What we bind here, we bind there. What if we loose here, we loose there. And see, if we use the opening of our mouth in an ignorant way, then unknowingly, because ignorance means not knowing, we also have that redound and rebound to ourselves. So we misuse words. For example, someone saying their whole life, well, I don't think this, I don't think that, so forth and so on. You don't think that... <laughs> you don't think that it would have a negative effect on their mind at some later point in their life? Think about it for a moment. This is food for thought. And so before we even get into the no part of our lesson, seeing that this idea of words, sound, and power, oh, before we, before we leave off this point, let's touch on this, the NAACP. I wanted to do this in a separate video, but I'll put it here, at least initially, the NAACP, right? They talk about the mind is a terrible thing to waste. When I went to school as a younger, you know, as a young, younger individual, so forth and so on, we had some very good teachers, and I give thanks that I was able to have black teachers. And the school that I went to, thanks um, to my mother, primarily and to my father also as well, that this school that I went to had black teachers, black Christian teachers, let me say that. Not just ones that were just um, about that, that counterfeit Christianity, that counterfeit nigger stuff that's going on today. No, they were real, real Christian folk. In other words, they, they did what the Bible said to do. They, they, they operated in that sense. It wasn't just about tithes and offerings. They were real Christian. So they taught us, and this was Brooklyn Junior Academy. I'll just put it out there, Brooklyn Junior Academy, which is unfortunately, I don't think, no longer um, active, so forth and so on. Anyway, we had a teacher, I think it was Mr. Murdoch, Marduk, Mr. Murdoch, right? And Mr. Murdoch, black, black man, right? He, he would 
and and also um, Miss Rhodes. I don't want to get into reminiscence zone right now, but anyway, we were taught that that statement, though they were very proud about black causes and that which was black and helping to move the race and the people forward, they had criticized that statement from the NAACP called um, a mind is a terrible thing to waste because they said that according to English and according to language that you are supposed to be able to break down a sentence at any part of the sentence and it still makes it still has an inherent sense you understand it still has an inherent sense so if we would break down a mind is a terrible thing I think this one is connected with the I don't think you know people say well I don't think so and I've, I, you, brought, you might be able to find some video somewhere where I've said at some point, I don't think so. But now I'm becoming conscious of this because you say, I don't think. You are saying to yourself that you are not a conscious, sentient.